One of the challenges of space is uh, learning how humans adapt to space conditions, but while we're doing that, we might as well learn a little bit about how other organisms deal with this microgravity in space. I'm Chip Taylor. I'm director of Monarch Watch here at the University of Kansas. I've been in Kansas since the fall of 1969. I'm now a, department, a member of the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology. But I've had a lot of fun with this program we call Monarch Watch, and it continues to make a lot of connections around the world. Well, one of the things we're going to do very shortly is supply Monarch caterpillars uh, for the space shuttle that's going up on the 16th or maybe as late as the 19th of November. They're going to take these caterpillars up to the International Space Station. They're going to put them in an incubator on that space station. And then we're going to try to learn as much as we can about this insect and how it functions in space. Up in that environment, it's only going to have microgravity. What they, it's, it's a small portion of the kind of gravitational field that we have here on Earth. They're not going to be weightless, not completely weightless, but uh, it's going to be very close to being weightless. And uh, how they adapt to those conditions is going to be very interesting. There are at least five different ways in which this uh, butterfly could have problems up there in, in space. So we're going to be looking to see if they're able to cling to the substrate in this weightless environment. We're going to be looking to see if they can find a place to make a chrysalis uh, within this capsule. And they usually make a chrysalis on a horizontal surface. What's up and what's down in this space capsule? And then are they going to be able to split their skin uh, when they make that chrysalis? And then are they going to be able to hook into the silk pad that supports the chrysalis? And then finally, are they going to be able to come out as an adult that properly expands its wings? I mean, all of these processes uh, seem to involve gravity in some way on Earth. We're working with a company called BioServe Technologies that is associated with the uh, University of Colorado. And they approached us last April and said, you know, we're, we're trying to get monarchs in space. I said, really? I said, well, that's wonderful. Tell me about what you're trying to do. And they said, well, we're having a lot of trouble. Uh, we've got this artificial diet and we can't make, make it work. And are you guys doing anything with our artificial diet? And I said, well, you called it the right time because yeah, we're making good progress with this artificial diet. And that was in April, and we had a, a diet that was fairly good at that time, but now we've got a diet, who knows, 20, 30 iterations later that's a lot better than the diet that we started with in April. And uh, we've got something that really works now. One of the things we're going to do as part of this is send caterpillars to schools. They're going to put them into simulated capsules uh, that are very similar to the one that's up in space. They're going to be able to follow the development of the caterpillars uh, in their classrooms at the same time uh, on the same program with the larvae started the same way uh, as is going on in space. Uh, the capsule is monitored uh, on a 24-7 basis and they'll take selected images out of that and post them and uh, we'll have all those links on our website and uh, we'll be able to uh, let everybody know just exactly what's happening. I mean if it's a disaster we'll let everybody know and if it's a great success uh, certainly we'll, we'll maybe beat our chest a little bit. Thank you.